All right, our next topic is gonna to be industrialization. That's the next topic for the next few questions, actually. So industrialization, if you look at the root word of it, it's industrial, which means industry. Manufacturing, making things with factories and uh, machines, usually. So America's rapid industrialization involved the following. Okay, so these are the things it takes for America's industrialization. That's what this question's about, okay? Advances in commercial transportation like railroads. See, when civilization first began, every city was put, pretty much every community was put next to water. And that's for two reasons. One is for drinking and food, but the other thing is for transportation, okay? Water transportation is some of the easiest transportation you can have. Well, by the 1800s, we now have railroads, which makes it where you don't have to live next to the water. You can actually stretch out all across America like we did back in Migration West. Uh, the invention of new materials. One of those new materials is steel. Okay, so now steel's an old material, but we have something new called the Bessemer process, which makes it much faster and cheaper to manufacture steel. And now we start using steel in our railroads, which makes them a lot safer. And we use steel to actually make buildings, which you can now build taller than you used to. All right, the growth of urban population. So in order to have a lot of industry and factories, you have to have a big urban population. Well, with the invention of new technologies, it allows us to actually live in bigger and bigger cities. And that allows us to have many factories and much industry, okay? And the growth of the cities, okay? So next thing we're gonna talk about is industrialization's effect, okay? The city is the heart of an industrial society. Because of industrialization, urban centers grew along America's East Coast. So when America started, okay, as a colony, as actually several colonies, uh, we all landed on the East Coast of America, okay, this side. So uh, basically, our population centers grew from there. So when we're starting to industrialize and make all these huge factories, it made sense that we needed so many workers that we just went where the people were, okay? So raw materials flow into a city and workers change them into finished goods. The railroads are allowing this to happen in a huge scale. So for instance, if I'm, there's a, an iron mine out there in West Virginia or a coal mine or something, well, there's no factories there. How are you gonna make use of that material? Well, you put it on a railroad and you ship it to New York City or Chicago where they actually have the foundries there uh, in order to melt it down and make steel, okay? So we're shipping a bunch of raw materials in like trees, uh, coal, iron, you know, all these things you can think of, even meat, okay? We talked about cows uh, and they are finishing those things in the city and then finished goods are sent to markets elsewhere. So they ship in raw material, they process it in factories into something else, and then they ship it all over the world after that, okay? And the, of course, the shipping lanes and the railroads are really helping this to boom. What is required for industrialization? That's the next thing, okay? So industrial cities require food production and storage. So to have millions of people living in a city, you have to have enough food for millions of people to eat safely, okay? So you gotta be able to store that stuff. Internal and external security systems. Internal means the inside, external means the outside, of course. So internal security for a city would be something like the police, okay? Y'all, cities do not work without police. It would be a nightmare, okay? External security, an example of that would be something like the army or the navy. We need something to protect the entire country. So you can't have big cities without security. And personal security, uh, I would consider that internal as well. And that's one of our biggest things in America is our second amendment right to bear arms, okay? We have the right to protect ourselves, whether that be from somebody that is going to come into our home or somebody that is going to take over the government. So we have the right to even protect ourselves from the government so long as it's an illegitimate government, okay? All right, and another thing you need for industrialization is transportation, okay? You have to have 
massive transportation. Think about all that food that needs to come in. Think about all the lumber that needs to come in to build the city and all the iron and all the coal, all these things that we need, copper for electricity. We need pipes, we need all the stuff for plumbing. We have to have massive transportation networks to allow raw material to flow in and finished goods to flow out in a timely manner. As farming technology increased, farm workers moved to the cities for a job. Okay, so one of your basic vocabulary definitions was technological unemployment. That is when a machine takes your job. Well, when America was founded, something like 90% of Americans were farmers, okay? Now look around today, how many people in America are farmers? Well, what happened to all those farming jobs? Well, the machines took them, okay? Tractors, combines, the harsh strong mechanical reaper, the steel plow, all these things helped us to generate more food with less people. So those people need to find something to do. So what they actually did in the late 1800s and early 1900s is these ex-farmers moved into the cities and became factory workers. So in a lot of cases, they were actually building tractors and things like that in the factories. So uh, there were very few laws about child labor, okay? And we're gonna get into that in the next video. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second.